Hey guys, and welcome back to another tutorial. Today, we'll be creating a 2D syncing intro using After Effects. So no, I'm not quitting Game Maker. This is just something a little bit different and maybe something different for you to learn as well. So without further ado, let's get started in this tutorial. So the first thing you wanna do is get a song. I have chosen a song called, uh, wait, what's it called? I don't know, but it's a pretty good song. Na Night something. I'll leave, a, I'll leave the song name in the de description box if you want to follow along with the exact same song. However, any song that has basic beats should be fine. So the first thing we're going to do is create our new composition by clicking the new comp button. And call this sync intro. Make the width 120 and the height 720. Make the frame rate 30. Obviously, if you want 60, that'd be fine. But for this intro tutorial, we'll make that 30. And the, I'll make the duration 20 seconds, resolution full and okay. The background color, we'll make that blue. Cool. So we've got that. Now let's uh, drag our song in and make a text called text. So in the, so let's just drag this over so we've got more space to work with. And there's a few things that we need to do at the start. First of all is to center this text layer. Now one thing that you may notice is that the anchor point actually isn't centered. So if I scale this up, it wouldn't scale from the center. Now this is a problem. To fix this, simply download a script called move anchor point. Now I'll leave a link in the description to where you can download this, but it's really useful and saves me a ton of time. So click on the move to custom point button and that'll simply move that to the middle. To center the text itself, click on the button next to the magnification and click title action safe and drag the text layer so that the anchor point is in the center of the crosshair. Cool. So now we've got that center, we can turn off the title action safe and pretty much start the syncing. Before that, actually, there's one thing we can do, make a new solid and call this black widescreen bars. Now this is very commonly used effects in most intros and films. So in your effects and presets, search up CC Jaws. Most likely you'll have this inbuilt. Drag that in. Drag the completion to around 71. Now that doesn't look too good at the moment. So change the shape to block and the width to zero. Cool. So that's your black bars. Now let's uh, create another solid called transition. And this is a very simple solid that basically controls the in and the fading in and fading out. So click T for opacity. Click the stopwatch. Drag it out to around 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 there, a bit more than a second and drag it all the way to zero. All right, now that you have this transition, let's start with the text animation. So at the very start, we're gonna make the text spin on with scale. So click on the text layer and right click it and click pre-composed. What that does is it makes it a composition by itself. Call that text and we'll leave that over there. Now at the very start, on the text layer, click R and click the stopwatch to start keyframing. The first value, say 180. The second value, which is around where opacity is zero for the transition, make that zero. So that just spins on. Then t click T and then click Shift R. That's so that the opacity and the rotation comes up. So click opacity here. Sorry, I'm not opacity, my bad. Scale and rotation. At the very start, click on the stopwatch for scale. Drag that down to around 30. And when the rotation reaches zero, drag that up to 100. Cool. Highlight all of these. Right click, keyframe assistant, and click easy ease or F9. 
Let's see how that looks now. Let's RAM preview that and make sure that your frame rate for the preview is 30. One more time. Cool. That looks cool. So now let's um I think maybe a little bit faster will look a bit better, like maybe like this. That looks cool. Now to make this even look even cooler, we can make our text slow down as we rotate it. So highlight the rotation values, click the graph editor, click fit all graphs to view, and make sure you're editing the speed graph. So to make it slow down eventually, you want to grab the handles and move it to the left. Like so. Cool. Get out of the graph editor and do the same for the scale. And drag it to the left. Generally, when you drag it to the left, it means that you're going to make it slow down. All right, now let's watch our animation. So as you can see right there, it's actually looking pretty decent. Now I've got that down, let's start with the bass drop. So let's find where the bass actually drops. Curl down, twist down the um, brackets, down and click waveform. And you want to find where your bass starts. Now I know for a fact that mine starts at around 11 seconds. So let's drag the 11 all the way down to here. Now let's listen to the song. So just by looking at the waveform, I can tell that right here, which is kind of the climax of the song, if I zoom in a little bit, this is where the bass drops. So unselect everything and click the asterisk. Now what that asterisk does is it makes a little marker. All right, so you know that that's where your bass drops. To drag our song a little bit forward. Yeah, my bad. Let's actually get rid of this marker. Oh, my bad. Let's undo that marker for now. Because I think it's better off if I drag it a little bit more forward, maybe around there. And then put a marker right there. Now I've got that marker, let's play the song again. As you can see, it works really well. Now to find the next one, to make it even easier, we can change the frame rate to less, maybe like 15, and play it again. <laughs> So just like that, you can see I've keyframed two more, put, placed two more markers, just by making it slow down. So make your frame rate back, and let's play it again. Cool. Add a few more. So basically, when you're just playing it through it, what what I sometimes do is just click the asterisk. Just keep on pressing it whenever the bass drops. So now I've got that. This is obviously not final. So after a while, we are going to change it up um, depending, like trial and error, basically. Now let's select our text layer and let's start the syncing. So go to your first marker. Click page up, which moves it one frame to the left. Click S, and you want to click this keyframe button right here. Okay, go one frame to the right, and drag this up to around maybe 160. And highlight those two keyframes you just created, and copy that. That's basically the sync, just copy that for every layer. So one layer here, one layer here as well, and of course one layer here. And oh, sorry, my, my bad. One thing you have to make sure is that the second keyframe has to be where the marker is. 
So let's just delete everything here. Go into your uh, marker here and move one frame to the left, page up, and then paste it. And do the same for the rest. So one frame to the left, paste it. One frame to the left, paste it. And do the same for the rest. Uh, I think that's... You can zoom in if you want to make sure. Sometimes it's not exactly lined up, just to make it as close as possible. And lucky last. Bang. Now let's play our composition and see how this looks. Cool. Now there's one thing that I've noticed and that's that our sinks are actually kind of slow. So we can actually copy that, move that in between around there. Move one, make one around here. So now if we play that, there we go. Let's just do four for now, and let's just try to get this good. So I've got the spinning on, and dang. Now let's do something called wiggle. So let's create a new adjustment layer and call this a wiggle, and drag that above the text layer and putting put an put in an effect called wiggle both position and rotation now your settings are for position make this 0 0.7 for the first one wiggle amount 30 and for your rotation wiggle amount 6 and wiggle speed 0 0.7 let's play that As you can see, it gives your sink quite a bit of life. It looks really cool. Bang, bang. Now what we can do is, at the very start, you can hear some drums that are tapping away rapidly. Now we can use something called a flash for that. So create a new solid, make it black and call this flashes. Make that above the wiggle and call and play, turn your frame rate down to around 15 and play it until you get to that drum thing. All right, I think it's around there. As you can see, I placed a marker right there. And what we're going to do is click T, hit the stopwatch, move one frame down, move it, uh, click, make the opacity back to zero, and make that 100, and just keep on doing that. And one thing I think I might need to do is, at the very start, make that, sorry, make one more keyframe around there to zero. So it always starts off zero. So, right, this is 100. And just because we're lazy, we can copy this over and over, like so. And right when we get the base drop, just delete everything. Cool. And make sure that your final one's also zero. Let's play that. Make your frame rate back to 30. Cool. One thing that I've noticed is that this actually isn't the paste drop. Let's copy everything, I think. And let's paste that in. around here. Copy everything except for the first keyframe because that's zero. And one more. And delete everything up to the base drop. 
Oh, and make sure the last one is down to zero. Now, obviously, this is optional. However, I think it's a pretty good rendition. Just don't overdo it, I guess. Which I probably have. Sweet. So now I've got that done, I think we're looking pretty good. The final thing we can do is in our text, click shift and then T. And every time the bass drops, we can change the opacity as well. So we're gonna copy these five keyframes, control C. Click the stopwatch for the opacity. Right there. And paste it all in. Oh, whoops. Oh, my bad, that's right, yep. So, yeah, you can't paste from scale. So like that. And let's just do it manually. So at the very start, we're gonna make our opacity around 70. Actually, make that 100 at the very start. Then the next one, make that 100 as well. Then copy that, control C, paste it right here. And make the first one 70. So basically, it's going to go bang, 100 opacity, it's going to slowly decrease, and it's going to go back up, 100. So copy these two keyframes, and paste them every single time the bass drops. Well, not, not the bass drops, I mean like, for every beat, I guess. Sweet. Let's play that and see how that looks. Cool. Alright, now, now let's actually finish off our other sinks. So copy these two and paste that around in between. If we look at the... right here. Cool. And one around here. And of course, one around there. Cool. Oh, my bad. I've got to copy this and paste that right here. So, hopefully, that's clear and you're following along well. <laughs> Nice. So we've got that down. Now this is the really basis, basic effects of sync. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, is that enough? Yeah. Cool. So in the next tutorial, I'm going to be adding some more effects. I'm going to add some Twitch. I'm going to add some uh, optic compensation. Which is a really nice effect that I recommend you all to learn. And overall, as time goes on, this intro is gonna look epic. Cool. So now I've got a really simple and nice intro. Let's watch it one more time. <laughs> Alright, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.